So how is ChatGPT going to change software development in 2023? It's a big question. Let's find out. Very recently, OpenAI released something known as ChatGPT. So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a chat-like interface that allows you to interact with artificial intelligence, also known as AI. And in this very simple interface, which I'll show you here, you can type in a random question about anything or perhaps ask it to perform a task for you and it will give you the results back that it finds or generates for you in real time. This is amazing because you can ask it to do a whole number of things. And this is the first time in perhaps 15 to 20 years that I have had a real moment that stopped me in my tracks to realize, wow, this is a complete game changer. And going forward, we're going to have a whole bunch of new stuff that's going to be based around things like ChatGPT that's going to change the way that we interact with technology. The first time I had this is when I worked with a search engine and searched something and realized that there was an endless amount of information out there that I could interact with. The second time was when I found Google images and I could find any number of images that I wanted. And that was absolutely amazing. And then the third time when I first interacted with a mobile phone that had apps and we could write apps for them, get these apps directly into users hands. That was the third one. Now it's been many years since then. The last one was around 2006, 2007 when I first started interacting with mobile apps. And since then, nothing has really kind of shaken the core foundation of technology like ChatGPT has. And this is really important in regards to many different industries, but especially software developers. And a lot of software developers are thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be out of a job. This is crazy. Like, what am I going to do? There's a lot of worry there. Let's talk about how ChatGPT is going to change the way that you work as a software developer. The first things first, let's just get this one right out of the way. It's going to write code. I know this because I've used it to write code already. Recently, I needed to take one type of code and I needed to morph it into another type of code. And what does that mean? Sometimes in mobile applications, we need to work from, I have a Kotlin class and I need to have this Kotlin class written in a protocol buffer. And that's a Google protocol buffer. It's a way to communicate, you know, binary, it's a whole different topic. But for whatever reason, the backend communicates over protocol buffers. And I need to write that code of saying, hey, I need to get from Kotlin to protocol buffers. And maybe I'm not an expert in protocol buffers or I haven't built or mapped this type of class before. What I recently did is opened up ChatGPT, asked ChatGPT to to transform this class from a Kotlin data class into a protocol buffer message objects. Within seconds, it wrote the code for me. Now here's the thing, the code wasn't 100% perfect. The code was about 90 to 95% correct. I had enough knowledge of protocol buffers to know that, hey, I need to tweak these few things and it was perfect. What it did though was save me time and time is the number one resource that we can't renew. It's the most valuable resource. That code to take me to write by hand probably would have taken me 15 to 20 minutes. I got it in maybe 15 to 20 seconds. I had to make a couple of adjustments. So in one to two minutes, I was able to replicate what I normally takes me maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes to write. And that's just for a very simple use case. So yes, chat GPT is going to be able to write code on the same topic. This could be a number two, but you could probably group this with number one, but we'll just say it's number two. It's going to help you find out how to write new code. And so it's very similar to what we did before, but maybe you've never done what you need to do. For example, I recently needed to try to make a phone call with Twilio, which is a telecom provider. And in that telecom provider, I need to write this code with Ruby. And so what I typed into chat GPT was how to make a phone call with Twilio Twilio with Ruby. That then gave me a template which I could work off of. I saw what libraries I needed to include. I saw how I needed to connect to the client, provide the API keys where I needed to provide them, and then make the phone call. This exposed me automatically and answered the question to me of what I wanted to do very quickly. Now, as a software developer, one of the things that we do a lot of the time is spend a ton of time on sites like Stack Overflow, Google, or trying to find the answer to these questions. How do I write this? Or how do I do this with this library or this language? Language. And then we have 50, 100 links that we're clicking through, reading blogs, watching YouTube videos. And eventually, after we've kind of pulled sources together from many different places, if we didn't find one source, we're able to finally do what we want after tweaking and playing with it. With ChatGPT, I simply just asked it, hey, how do I do this with this language? And it wrote it out for me. That gave me a great starting point. Now, again, I think this is important to preface that that code was probably about 80% correct. There were a couple of things in there where it was using a deprecated version or a deprecated method call, but that was easy to find in the IDE 
key or as soon as I ran it, I got a warning. I could see, oh, I need to replace this with this. Got me going and what it did again is it saved me a lot of time. So this helps you identify and find new ways to write code. Now, number three, again, these are all kind of very closely related. It's going to help you find the documentation. How do I do X? And then it kind of writes it out for you. Here's how you might connect to the Twilio library with Ruby. And it's a very useful form of finding how to do something, some very generalized documentation to do the tasks that you need. As developers, a lot of times, and especially in the Android world, we'll go to the documentation and it's absolute mess or hodgepodge that you can't find anything, or perhaps it's wrong completely. Now, I'm not here to say that chat GPT is perfect. By all means, it's not. I typed in an example. How would I show a list of images inside of a Jetpack Compose? And it generated some Jetpack Compose code in Android, but it did use some deprecated classes and composables in there. So I did have to go back and find out what those need to be replaced with. Again, it's not perfect, but here's the thing with ChatGPT. We are very early. Right now, it's just early enough for it to be usable. AI is going to learn. It's going to learn what we do and how we do it. We're gonna get more and more realistic and more and more correct results as the models continue to improve, which is going to be fantastic to help you save more time and write the software that you need to write. Now, number four, ultimately what this does is it allows you you to create things faster. This has been a common theme in software development for many, many years. As new languages have been created, new platforms, new technologies have been created, what have we always done? We have created new layers of abstraction and we've created new libraries and frameworks and everything stacking on top of themselves. We no longer write binary. We rarely write assembly. We rarely write C unless you're doing very low level programming, which there are a lot of C programmers and Rust and so forth. But a lot of developers, and perhaps I would say most and argue that most are developers that work in high level programming languages. We're talking talking Kotlin, Java, we're talking JavaScript, Ruby, Python. These are all high level programming languages. .NET's another one of them. We're not writing low level code. And ChatGPT is going to allow us to give us like another, almost like psychological edge or mental edge, cognitive edge over what we're doing because now we can ask one central source how to do something. All right, so now the real question is, should you be worried? And the answer is, it depends. If you're someone who doesn't like change, who doesn't want to move with the times, who doesn't want to learn, then this is something I've said for a long time. Software development is not the industry for you to be in. It is the one industry or one of multiple industries where things change at a breakneck speed. Something that I learned two weeks ago might already be out of date. Things that I learned early in my career are so archaic that I'd get laughed out of an interview if I even tried to use them. Now the concepts still remain there, abstractions, perhaps some design patterns and stuff like that, but you always have to be learning and adapting with the industry. And the same goes for this exact situation. You need to learn the tools that are coming out and chat GPT is another one of these tools that you need to learn. This is going to allow you to create code faster. Now, sure, you might think that, hey, that's cheating, but it's not cheating. It's using a tool that's allowing us to work faster. Is using a high level programming language cheating or should you go write assembly? You know what I mean? Now, the other concern that a lot of people have is, well, AI is eventually going to be able to replace my job. And for some things it might, it might be able to connect something very easily. I might be able to tell it, hey, I would like you to connect my Google Sheet to my Webflow site using a Zapier integration with here's my API key and notify me every time a new row has been added inside of the Google Sheet via text message. I might be able to type that in and it might just wire everything up for me. That's great. Now I can focus on other problems. I know how all those things work, but here's the thing, I'm the one that knows what needs to be done. The AI doesn't know what needs to be done. It knows how it's done. I understand why the AI knows how to do it. So you need to use the AI to help you implement what you're going to do. How can we expect AI to replace our jobs if our companies and our employers and our clients don't even know what they want? How is AI going to know what we want? Just something to think about. So it's a tool for your toolbox. I would definitely give it a shot. Sign up for an account, the link in the description. If you have any questions, comments, let me know what you think about chat GPT. I think it's gonna be one of these tools that we're going to use for a very long time and it's going to change the face of how we interact as software developers, how we write code, how we figure out new code, how we discover new code. It's just going to be part of our day-to-day -day life cycle moving forward. Talk to you soon.